love to stay in beautiful places like these and in the past six years we have never once paid for a campground before i share how let me share why so i started out back in 2016 living in the back of my subaru outback after that i ended up purchasing a small winnebago travel trailer to travel around the us in my ultimate goal is to be as comfortable as i can be while being debt free and living tiny really does the trick for me i want to have as few compulsory bills as possible so that I don't have to rely on a job that I hate in order to survive, basically. <laughs> so I traveled all around the, the US on a very tight budget and I actually found that it wasn't just my home state that I was able to park just about anywhere, but that was true across the US, including major areas like New York City, Nashville, Los Angeles. There's a lot of places that you can simply pull off and stay for the evening. And since I had everything on board, of course, why would I pay for a place to park when that's really all I needed? So I found a new job. While I was commuting, you know, I had a few places outside of Seattle, but I challenged myself to find more places much closer to work to take my commute from over an hour each way down to 10 minutes, if that. I spent a few weeks looking around and I found quite a few places and that actually worked out quite well. If you look at what RV camping is, it's simply pulling up somewhere, parking and hooking up to their utilities. Well, again, I don't need their utilities. We have water, we have power, we have sewage. There are plenty of other resources that we can use to get those amenities uh, that keep us from having to pay 30 plus dollars a night, which is just simply outrageous. It, there is an abundance of places to go. And the secret is, it's incredibly easy. Let me show you how. So this is a great example. It's a beautiful spot, it's quiet. We're in a big city and we're only about a block away uh, from a beautiful massive park here in Redmond. The street is very quiet and there's no graffiti or nonsense. So we're not bothering anybody and nobody's bothering us. Now this particular spot was actually a pretty easy find. We just found this by driving by one day. For spots like this, being aware and observing, or you can also look on Google Maps, which is what we do in new areas that we've never been before. So we'll look on Google Maps and we'll street view. And generally speaking, what we'll do is we'll pick a spot on the map that we wanna be near, whether it's a friends and family or some sort of main area. We will look at the streets, especially using street view, uh, let's see if there are any parking restrictions. Is there any graffiti in the area? Are there other RVs there? Uh, which may be a good sign that we're okay to be there as well. Uh, semi trucks are actually another pretty good sign that you're okay being in that area because other big rigs are there as well. So while we're traveling, of course, we do tend to stay at the more common hotspots for overnight stops. Walmart, Cracker Barrel, Target, Home Depots, Lowe's, truck stops, rest stops, Cabela's, 
casinos and any other big chain stores that seem pretty reasonable. We've never really had a problem. I think we, we were asked to move once when we were between a Lowe's and a Walmart, but of course we were actually in a, uh, in a loading zone that we just didn't realize uh, between the two uh, that turned into a loading zone after hours. So I know a lot of folks do ask if they can stay. We've actually, I've never once asked if we could stay. It's also never really been a problem. It's not a bad idea to ask. We just never had the need. If we're in an area, we, you know, we're not seeing anything on Google Maps. We might also use freecampsites.net, iOverlander and Compendium to find good spots. And they also have reviews if there's network connection, if there's other resources like dump stations and water fills and things like that. Those are pretty invaluable resources. And freecampsites.net is actually the one that we use the most for the BLM campsites, Department of Natural Resources and whatnot. And a lot of those sites that you can actually say, a lot of states will have like their own pass, like Washington has the Washington State Discover Pass, where you can stay at any of the campgrounds and there's a lot uh, for up to 14 days each, um, as long as you have that pass. And the pass is like 35 bucks. So it's not really that bad if you're gonna be in the state for a long time. Most of these spots, of course, are outside of the city area. So if you're kind of trying to explore a big city, it might not be a big priority for you. Uh, but if you're trying to kind of get out and get into these beautiful areas, including like Mount Rainier, Olympic National Park, things like that, the Discover Pass is a pretty, pretty good example of a, a state pass that you might wanna pick up. Now, as for the biggest cities like New York or Seattle, where we live, it certainly can be done. Anybody that says it can't is probably just afraid for one reason or another. Never have a problem. It's, it's really great. We have found quite a few spots that are safe. They're quiet. They're not in front of people's houses. Um, they're not blocking a business. We're not taking up parking from anybody. They exist. You do have to look for them. Sometimes you just have to get lucky and it does take a little bit of persistence. Now, if you're just coming into Seattle, there are a couple spots like on freecampsites.net. Uh, and I Overlander that are probably a good jumping off point, but you may have to use Google Maps, Street View, or get on your bike or get in, if you have a tow vehicle, uh, get into that and go explore the cities. In New York, I actually found more luck being in New Jersey and then taking the train into New York City. There is a way to be in New York City, but in this case, I believe I stayed right outside and just took the train over. And of course, just as kind of a general courtesy, if there are other RVers in the area or van dwellers, you don't want to crowd them. You don't want to pull right up next to them and bring attention to them because you don't know if that's one of their, their typical spots. And if you're in more of a residential area and people are intimidated by the one RVer, they might be more intimidating seeing that they're attracting unwanted attention. Just kind of something to keep in, keep in mind. So for tonight, we're actually staying here at a local hospital. As you can see, we're pretty far out of the way. None of the offices are busy, especially by the time that they open up, we're long gone. We did end up driving about 30 or 40 miles south to get here and we'll head to my mom's tomorrow morning. We've never had a problem here. It's pretty darn quiet, believe it or not. Uh, even though there are ambulances that are coming in, they've shut their sirens off at least two blocks away. Surprisingly, we don't hear any of that noise. Of course, if we ever felt uneasy about where we're parking, 
we would just get up and move. Luckily, this has only happened once, and we were actually in Nashville when that happened. We got up, we left, there was no incident, and everything was uh, good from there. So in six years, we've really had very, very, very few problems. We had one person try to get into the back of our truck and our, into our locked toolbox, but beyond that, you know, that was an easy one, and Samantha actually just scared her away. So that was kind of funny. Now, in the last six years, if I had paid say on average $30 a night and some campgrounds can go to 150 plus especially if they're KOAs and things like that uh, but say we save $30 a night over the last six years we have saved $63,000 there's a lot of campgrounds that are significantly more but I've yet to find anything that's consistently less unless you're staying there for months and of course we like to move we like to have the freedom to go on the weekends and not worry about anything uh, we also like to not have to worry about neighbors and things like that or worry about whether we're going to even be able to make a reservation and i know that's like the number one thing that seems to be stressing folks out it's nice to know that that's not going to be a problem for us and, and it wouldn't be for anybody you know but it is one of those things where sometimes you have a fence on the one side of your rig but when your blinds are closed what does it matter and saving all of that money is also in and of itself a lot of freedom as well for us it's more than worth it and i know a lot of people are afraid to just simply pick a spot and stay there but we wouldn't even give it a second thought So this is definitely one of our favorite spots. We were actually about a mile or two down the road and Emma spotted this on the way to work. So she was actually riding by on the bike trail that's right here and said, hey, why don't you take a look at that spot? There are a few other folks that kind of seem to do the same thing we do where they'll rotate using kind of this, this road because it's so quiet, it's safe peaceful. You're not directly in front of anybody's house as far as I can tell. Grocery store less than a block away. We do follow the 72 hour rule of course so we'll pull in on a Sunday afternoon and we'll leave by Wednesday. If you look up the video we did on why they hate us, taking those tips into account will let you go so much farther. Again, if you think that there's nowhere for you to go with your rig or you're trying to save money and you still need to be in a city, even if only temporarily, there are certainly options. And if you prefer to stay in an RV park or a campground or something like that, there's nothing wrong with that either. Uh, it's just one of those things for us. I know how much money we've saved and I don't mind it one bit. It's definitely never been like a dangerous thing. If anything, we always feel safer because we know that we're not quite as predictable. I hope this video is helpful, guys. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up button. Leave a comment below with other suggestions. And if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.